Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, let's read what people are saying in the chat. Shalom, my friends. Oh, You're shit. probably wondering why I gathered you all here today. Welcome back to another thrilling entry in the Amazing Friends Saga. Will Ryan flex on the chat? Shit. Will Ethan be compared to some white male celebrity? Will chains be evoked? I mean, yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah, probably. Can uh, guys. Voice for every episode, Ryan? <laughs> yeah. We, we're waiting on Kenny. He's switching to his uh, computer so that... Um, we can not have Skype audio be the podcast. Um, he's taking forever. Um, you know, chains in the chat for Kenny taking forever. <laughs> chains in the chat for Kenny. May he rest in peace. We lost him in between, in between starting the call and going live. I'm trying to set my phone up so I can, uh, shit. All right, guys, while we're waiting, why don't you guys ask me questions? We've got somebody saying, uh, who's excited for King in Black? Me! Yeah, I'm excited for King in if, Black. Let's give it up for Ryan. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, King in Black is totally insane, and it's the best. Hell yeah. I, uh, I was talking to... Our buddy John Iker earlier today. We're having a great chat. Having a there great he time is about all the cool stuff hey. he's working on. KBP. Um, Sorry, I had some technical difficulties. Uh, I'm still not going to be able to record my audio, guys. It won't work. Do you have QuickTime? Right. Right. I do. It's just the problem is is this not picking up any headphones that I'm using right now. It won't register them, even these Apple branded ones with my MacBook. So rip. All right, I'm going to kill Thanks myself. Guys, I got to go. I got to go kill myself now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... This scroll banner that we have right now looks way better. It looks good. Mm -hmm. Do um, Kenny, is it picking up your headphones enough to where the Skype call is going through your headphones? Or is it still just coming out of your laptop? It's going through my headphones, but it won't record in the actual audio software. Okay, well... If this ever happens again, you know, friend, friendship over. Yeah. Uh, sorry, yep. podcast fans. It's going to sound like shit again for a week. I just got a text from Chip. It sounds like he's in for next week. Oh, shit. Revealed yeah. here on the show that maybe Chip Zdarsky's on next week. Everybody shut the fuck up about it. Yeah, nobody tell anybody. <laughs> it's a surprise. Is that a power move because my audio won't work? And you're like, so let's just go ahead and announce our next guest. Yeah. Hey, guys, next show's episode will be better. This mm -hmm. one has flopped. Um, well, what are you going to do? All right. What um, do? So what are we get? we're going to do? Pop culture news, then talk to Kenny about... Um, you want to do pop culture news before or after Kenny's breakdown? Let's do it uh, after. Let's talk to Kenny first. And then All right, we'll talk to Kenny. We'll see how much that gets us. Great. Great, Ethan. <laughs> Great. Whatever you just Let's said. Let's see how much material this guy's got. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm, I'm ready with you guys are to not press record, but begin the show. Yep. Okay. Uh, Ethan, do you have your chain by chance? I'm about to put oh, my top. Oh, you know what I do, bud. My, about to put my pigtail in. Chain up. Chain up. Bun up. As What's I don't up, have chat? Kind of Missed you guys. Well, this is this is how we transition into podcasting. This is our uh, this is our persona that we take on. Yeah, Kenny, you, you didn't bring any persona. bling. Uh, I don't really have any. Okay. <laughs> well, take your shirt off. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> or at least like, gonna be one of those like, kind of video shows. Yeah. Do you like turn your hat backwards? Maybe. I guess oh. I could. It looks weird because yeah. of my big like shaved chrome dome. No, I think you look great, everybody, dude. If everybody can go sign up for the Stegman and his amazing friends OnlyFans page, we'll have Kenny with his shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny will have his shirt off, and I'll I don't know I'll I'll do something stupid with my hair. Ryan, I got a mortgage to pay. Um, what are you doing for on the OnlyFans? <laughs> I'm just gonna flex the entire episode. Oh damn! Look at those oh, guns. Um, what the fuck? <laughs> I wanted to say about OnlyFans. Aaron just told me yesterday that she heard about only fans and was like hmm, maybe that's something that ryan would do to you know he could like you know <laughs> yeah. sell art through there so she she looked it up yeah. and she was uh quickly thwarted <laughs> listen dude 
I mean it. <laughs> Even if it's just for the meme, I'll start us a goddamn OnlyFans, and it's just you drawn on there, and, it, and you're just like, "What's up, chat?" I'll going? just I'll do it yeah. topless. <laughs> we could we do some sexy pics. Yeah, yeah hell yeah. Know. Let's do it. All right, you heard it here first, folks. Uh, Stegman and friends, pay, uh, not paid, not Patreon, because fuck that. <laughs> OnlyFans coming your way soon. Yep. Uh, speaking of, welcome to another episode of Stegman and his amazing friends, everybody. Uh, it's Ryan Stegman's podcast mm-hmm. about, usually about things that Ryan Stegman's doing, uh, or maybe some folks that Ryan Stegman knows and what they're doing. Ryan. Or folks that Ryan Stegman's doing. Whoa, all right. <laughs> Well, now it's a game of now it's a game of going back through the guest list and seeing seeing who it could be. Yeah, it's been all dudes so far. So just putting that out there, right out of the gate. I suck. I suck at getting people of the opposite gender on the show. I get. I suck at getting all guests on the show. Honestly. <laughs> the first question for the podcast is Ryan. Why do women hate you? <laughs> I don't know. It's a good question. I deserve it though. I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, we are, of course, what's up? I'm Griffin. I'm one of two supple boys that makes this show. Uh, I'm joined by my friend and creative partner, Ethan. What's up, dude? You got your chain on. I love it. And joining us once again, he's been on the show a number of times before, and we're so excited to have him back. It's Kenny Porter, or as some of you might know him as... Penny Porter is in the house. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? <laughs> What's up? Thanks Kenny? for having me back. I'm good. Of course, man. Hey, well, um, first, Ryan, are you drinking anything? I'm actually just drinking water right now. Oh, I, the one night I actually brought something. I'm drinking a a Clear Coast seltzer from. This is a Michigan crafted seltzer, Ryan, from Perrin Brewing Company. What do we got? What's the carb count? Uh. You ready for this? Carb count? A 3.2 carbs. Too many. Oh, Cor- <laughs> Corona, Coronas have zero. What? Corona seltzers, zero carbs. Oh, he's, he's high-roaded me already. He's like, nah, too many carbs. Three carbs? Fuck that. Yeah. How about this? Are you ready for this? Protein, 0.5 grams. How does that have protein? <laughs> it's got a little bit of protein in it. It's got Fuck barley it. in it or something? <laughs> they aged it in a barrel made out of beef jerky. Yeah. So good. so good. It's only 100 calories. I got orange passion. Uh, I'm going to crack it open. Oh, you hear that chat? Ooh. Can we get some chains in the chat for me? Uh, this might actually smack me just a little tiny bit because I have not ate. <laughs> so just put this in me, see what happens. John- Jonathan Eicher mentioned that we should get Megan Hutchison on here. Why haven't we done that? That would be great. <laughs> That's a good idea. Perfect. Yeah. That would be perfect and easy. Um,. And these. <laughs> That's a good Listen, point. The seltzer's not great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, well, but, you know. If they were sponsoring us, we'd say it was good. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Clear Coast, if you want to hit us up, please hit us up. Yo, you know who did actually follow me back on Twitter after I suggested it on our other show was Cottage Inn Pizza. <laughs> oh. They gave me a little follow back after they heard that I was talking about them. And you know what? You've made that's, it. You've made that's, it. <laughs> that's it, man. I'm done. Wrapping it up. I don't like it. Well, I'm only tangentially <laughs> related to this show, so I'm still Jets all the way. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. You know what? Thank you, Kenny. Thank you. Some I had reason. so much growing up in East Michigan that it was at every single party, mm-hmm. every event. That that's because it's been. good. Yeah, but I just ate it so much that now I can't eat it. It's nobody else's fault that you're a pig. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> Kenny, all right, I respect it. I respect it. But do you get jets even when you're out here on the west side, or uh, do you have a, a west side chain that you prefer? Uh, I don't really ever, I mean, I don't live there, so I don't really order pizza to delivery anywhere on the other side of the state. That's <laughs> true. There. Oh wait, you saying? mean over here? I'm an idiot. Yeah. No, yeah, we always get jets. Uh, my wife is very particular about pizza, and jets is one of the few that never like does us wrong. Uh, jets always comes perfectly baked, mm-hmm. with a nice crisp crust. We like the Eugene Supreme. Oh, I love the Eugene Supreme. That's like yeah. the best mix of veggies and sausage. 
for anybody that doesn't know, Eugene Supreme has uh, <laughs> yellow peppers, onions, and green peppers, and sausage. And lately, I've been not eating meat, so I've been eating pizza. And I can you can get it from anywhere, and it's amazing. It's just the combination of toppings. I just combo. get the same yeah. toppings on pizza from anywhere. So that's a hot okay. tip. Uh, get some <laughs> toppings. News. New segment, Pizza Talk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's pretty um, much what this show always is. Real quick, we got a JP in the chat. What's JP, up, JP? JP uh, turned around a, a, a piece for me in one day. I can't talk about it, but it was awesome. Uh, JP rules. He's the best. Chains in the chat for JP. Uh, chains in the chat for Kenny. And chains in the chat for a great episode ahead of us. Mm-hmm. Um, a, a, now, a decent episode. Uh, it's okay. It's going to be fine. I thought it was over. I thought we were just going to argue why Jets was better, <laughs> and then I was going to get off of here as a spokesperson for Jets and, Pizza. And then I was going to kick your asses in Mario Kart. <laughs> we'll see. We'll, we'll try. See. It probably won't be fun Ooh. if you guys are super Ooh, good. Shit. You Hey, Kenny, was that, a, was that a stealth Star Wars quote? Yeah, pretty much. All right, dope. Like, cool. I'm, I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> I've made my peace with the prequels, okay? Like, yeah! I I don't love yeah. them, but they exist, and it's not like I could be a nerd and just wish them to not exist. So I'll throw out a I hate sand every once in a while when I'm at the I, beach and everything. I so. fucking love the prequels. All right, uh, all right. No, we're not talking about the prequels. Time to get into uh, it. Kenny, okay, all right, Kenny all right. where are we at? What, what, tell us what you got coming out now. Because with this, this episode, for anybody listening... We're going to go through... Kenny is is currently amidst breaking into comics. He's doing it. He's been at it for a while. Uh, it's really happening, and he's he's got stuff happening at, at DC. He's got stuff happening at Scholastic. Can I say that? I don't even know. Uh, oh, yeah, that was announced a while ago. Okay, he's got, he's got stuff happening all over the place, and so I think it's interesting to kind of get somebody while they're on the come up. So I want to hear what you've got going on, and uh, yeah. Sure. Awesome. Okay. I'll start with the DC stuff. So I've been doing a lot of shorts and stuff over there, mostly Green Lantern related stuff because I'm kind of a big Lantern boy. Like I love all that stuff a lot. Uh, Lantern Man, please. The Lantern Man. I am a Lantern Man now (laughs) with this podcast. Which brings me to Green Lantern Pizza. in. uh, Oh, (laughs) good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. That is good. We can all agree on that. That It is. It is. It is. Go ahead. Um, (laughs) But yeah, so I did the first Green Lantern story I did with Riley Rossmo. That was a Guy Gardner story. That was an eight page one in the horror anthology. And then I did a Red Lantern story for the summer anthology, which I know you love, Griffin. Oh, fuck. Uh, yeah, I do. You championed Excellent. a lot. Yeah, that was a Dex Star story. So once again, need... Michigan represent. Once again, I will say I need a Dex Star ongoing from Kenny right now. DC, if you're listening, please do it. Listen, space is his litter box, and I'm just here to chronicle every single adventure. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, I also did, um, yeah, so I did that with Paul Fry, and then I did a Superman story this past winter with Ramon Villalobos, uh, who's awesome, very talented. Yep, we did a fun uh, Superman story in there, which we incorporated a lot of our love for 90s action figures in it, because it was, uh, he fought Toy Man, so... We took a lot of like the total justice line of like there are literally action figures in there that Superman fights that you could have gotten in the 90s. Right. Uh, so that was a cool, fun little thing we put in there. And then now uh, just got announced Riley and I are teaming up again to do another Green Lantern story. And this time we're doing a team up between uh, Green Lantern and Etrick and the Demon, which is another one of my absolute favorites. So the fact that I got to do all the rhyming couplets was pure joy. And uh, my wife, Tracy... I had to walk into the room and ask me what the hell I was doing because I was reciting and uh, counting mm-hmm. the ambic pentameter on my fingers over and over, talking oh about God. the demons <laughs> downstairs <laughs> by myself for an hour. Uh, that was super fun, so I'm really excited. That's going to be in the Doomed and the Damned anthology that's coming out this Halloween. So that's a bunch of different yeah. team-ups between different superheroes mm-hmm. and horror characters. Damn. And you know who I would love to see on art on that Green Lantern street <clears throat> is uh, Riley Rosmo. <laughs> well, yeah. you're in luck. Cause that's who I'm fair oh so my! We got to do that. Yeah. A good friend, yeah. Riley. There's nobody I'd rather do that story with than him. Uh, uh well, no. come on, you know. I can't, Kenny, because I'm exclusive. Yeah. Yeah. You're taken. Right. 
It's like that guy in the movie who's like, I love my wife so much, but there's the other girl that's already married who can't have her. They're star-crossed lovers. Right. Robin's music starts playing in the background. <laughs> you start rolling a tear. Uh, but yeah, so we're really excited to get that out, and it was great to... I got to write Hal Jordan this time, which is obviously nope. like a dream come true. So nope. I've got to do Guy Gardner and Hal Jordan now, so that's two off of the Earth Lanterns list. Have and you been have been you been specifically list. pitching Green Lantern stuff, or have you has that just kind of like come up? Because I know you're a huge Green Lantern fan. I think it's I think it's just because they know that I love the character so much and know yeah. so much about it. So obviously, um, I did for the first one. It was I did pitch Green Lantern. I was like, I'd really like to do a Green Lantern horror story with the Guy Gardner thing. But now, like they knew because I the editors I work with, Dave and Alex and Andrew like know how much I love Green Lantern and the Lord and the whole world and that I get those characters like they love to come with me of those and anytime they'll let me play with that I'm all for it so growing up I was a dude like I literally had every Green Lantern shirt that existed and wore it as many days as possible Ryan has seen very embarrassing photos of me in high school oh yeah and shirts constantly Kenny uh, was a a portly young man yeah <laughs> Formerly I'm Portly good. Porter is what Ryan Lee affectionately calls him. <laughs> so yeah, I've always been a huge fan and like I've loved the power set, the characters, the stories. Like I came back in hard on superhero comics when Jeff Johns was doing his Green Lantern run and then uh when Pete Tomasi too was doing the Green Lantern core book. So like I revisit those books every once in a while. I still love them to death. And I still keep up on it. It's like one of the few superhero books that even if I, you know, fall off a little bit, which I don't anymore, I'm still pretty much a Wednesday warrior. Like the GL books are always in my top picks. Hell yeah. yeah. That, um, the new 52 Green Lantern stuff that Jeff Johns wrote, um, that like first, I think he did like 20 issues or something on that. First off, goddamn great Green Lantern stuff. Um, but also, that was the sort of stuff that got me really, really like into comics. Like, I was a fan, of course, of everything, but I was—I uh, don't know what. How old were we? Like eleven or twelve when New Fifty Two happened, Ethan? And so yeah. when that stuff dropped, uh, I was already into Green Lantern. But then I read that Green Lantern stuff uh, like regularly, like as it was coming out. And god damn, yeah, Green Lanterns the fucking best and i'm so excited to read more of your green lantern stuff kenny i'm very it's such a wild place right now with grant morrison like the the whole green lantern world is is wild well obviously i didn't try to you know copy grant or anything i said yeah well i don't know grant morrison um (laughs) (laughs) that he seems very nice uh I, I tried to bring in because a lot of that run right now is about him being way more of a space cop and being detached from Earth. So I tried to work that into my take on him. I still did my own take, but I had to try to remember like he's on Earth and he doesn't really want to be, and he seems yeah, to be yeah. with it. So I tried to work that in just to make sure that if anybody you know comes in off of like the Green Lantern season one or two, it still fits a little bit. Yeah, right. Which is what I tried to do with the Guy Gardner one. Okay, t- um, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the Scholastic thing that you have going? Have you talked sure. about that on the show before? Maybe Only a little briefly. bit. Briefly. Yeah. yeah. Give us the rundown the on that because that, that's really cool yeah. too. Yeah. So a couple of years ago, I put together a pitch with my buddy Zach Wilcox, who's a, a fantastic artist, um, for this book called Fearless Rider, which is about a little girl whose best friend moves away at the beginning of the summer, just before they're about to go into middle school. And after about a week, her friend just completely cuts contact, like stops answering the phone, won't answer emails. And so this girl, Kara, is super stressed out and she doesn't have her friend. And she's super obsessed with this TV show um, that's kind of like a common writer type show, like a um, like a Sentai thing. And she Mm -hmm. she decides like the thing her hero would do is like jump on her motorcycle and go get her friend back. So instead, she jumps on her bicycle and decides to ride three towns over to try to win her friend back, like runs away from school on the first day. And it's about their whole odyssey, like her and her pet ferret as they try to go get her friend back. Um, And we pitched it and Scholastic loved it and picked it up. So we've been working on that for the past couple of years and it comes out uh, next year, I think end of August or early September. I don't know the exact date, but it comes out 2021. So we've been super excited about that. And it's a way different process than working in direct market stuff. 
um, it's kind of great to be able to write a really long format thing and then reshape it like you would a novel. Right. Mm-hmm. Obviously, yeah. like you try to keep all the stuff like page turns and everything that you'd want to keep with monthly comics but there's way more room to breathe and you can have a lot more like big silent pages uh which is really good for emotional storytelling when you know if you want a page that's just the emotion of somebody having like a heartbreaking realization you can take that real estate to do it which i really appreciate and zach yeah, knocks right. that stuff out of the park every time and when's when's totally. that coming out uh, like I said, I think it's August next year. The date changed a little bit. It got, or it, um, it's going to release a little earlier, but it is, uh, about end of summer, beginning of fall 2021. Awesome. Uh, okay. So tell me this, um, what's the next step for you with the, the big two? Like how, how do you, what's your plan and how would you like to see things go from here? From here? Yeah. I mean, uh, so you've had the couple yeah. short stories. How many short stories have, has it been? Uh, this will be the fourth. And so, yeah, like when, what, what's your plan to get the, uh, like a full issue or a full arc or something like what, how do you plan about ongoing about this? Uh, well, my first plan is to storm the office. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> every, every Works time. every time. They love it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm just doing what my buddy Ryan did. Yeah. I said, what do I do? And he said, you buy yourself a decommissioned tank yep. and you drive it. <laughs> you like flip book. papers yeah. off of people's ta- desks and yep. scream in their faces. They love that, especially during these times. They want you to get as close to them as possible. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no mask, just right up in there. Right. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm just kidding. Wear a mask, everybody. But, uh, no, I mean, next up, I mean, they let me know that they wanted me to flex a little bit in short stories and everything, show that I could work well with the editorial team, that I knew the characters. Obviously, I'm a bit of a DC fanboy, so I think that... <laughs> that uh, um, like Dave said, I mean, when Dave was on here last week, he texted me just in the middle of the day. I was like, hey, how did Thomas Wayne get his fortune? And I just... Yeah, you mentioned that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the family was real in real estate and developing the city and everything. <laughs> and all this stuff. They got into development and a bunch of things. Um, so, yeah, I'm obviously a big fan of that. So, next up would be I mean, I've talked to the editors and stuff. It sounds like the next sort of thing would be to graduate up mm-hmm. uh, as things are available. Obviously, like stuff's a little nuts right now. Um, but, I mean, big moves. What I'd ideally like to do is like, I love those characters and I'd love to explore all of them in a longer format. So, the thing is, like, I love everybody in the DC universe. I would be just as excited to do an Animal Man story as I would a Batman or a Superman story. So right. right, right. That's the stuff I cut my teeth on reading, uh, you know, right out of high school that I absolutely loved. So next step would be to start, I would guess, probably do some one shots, some fill ins and stuff and move out from there or longer stuff is available. So. And then that's just on that side, like create our own things. I have a couple other things that are in development right now that haven't been announced. Ooh, yep. uh, so cool. then we got those going on. And then I'm also planning on, just because I can't not do it, I'm planning on doing probably some more Kickstarter stuff too. Mm-hmm. Just right. because I want to do some more immediate things uh, with some people that I like to work with. Yeah, that's one yeah, of the things the One of the things that I appreciate about you is how you just keep moving forward like you're just always moving forward, even though, you know, like things stall out at some point where you, you have, you don't have necessarily the work that you want yet, but you've, you're just always doing something. And I feel like that's, you know, that's the way that people have to be. They have to be self starters. Um, and you certainly are that. Can you, yeah. can you tell There's... everybody how long you've been at, like where you've officially, like the day that you, from the day that you said, I want to break into comics and you started writing comic book stuff till, till you got your first DC gig. How long was that? Cause with writers, it does, it takes yeah. a lot longer than people realize artists. It's a little yeah. different. I mean, it can take a long time for an artist, but an artist, it's much more obvious if you are like, you can look at somebody's art and say, that's good enough. It's much mm-hmm. harder to get somebody to read a full script and be like, is this person good enough? You know, you, you really have to have stuff published <laughs> yeah. at that point. Yeah. So, yeah, like how, how long has it been for you? Yeah, um, it's probably been about almost 10 years yeah. of like doing indie books and everything. Like the first comic I ever did was a one shot probably back around 2009 or 2010 that was just like a black and white um manga style thing i did with a japanese artist friend of mine named ali 
And we did that and I got it like published by a little tiny digital publisher back when that was like really taking off around 2009, 2010, like Mm -hmm. comiXology and graphically and everything were the hot new stuff that was out. Mm -hmm. Uh, From there, then I tried to put, I put some other pitches together, did a Kickstarter with my friends, uh, Kendall and Paulina uh, for a series that we got the Kickstarter funded. The series didn't end up getting picked up or anything. That was like really fun to do and was a way to, you know, prove I could make a full color comic like with a team. Mm -hmm. And then the first like kind of moment I broke in was in 2012. I won the first Top Cow talent hunt uh, for writing. So I did that and then I got to work on characters in the Witchblade universe. I did an issue of Artifacts. Right. uh, An Italian artist named Rom. So that was the first time I got to kind of flex like working on already established characters and had to do all the research for everything and do a completely original story. So that was kind of like the first moment. And I mean, you're always kind of breaking in, but stuff like that, like I kind of, I kind of liken it to there's all these sets of doors, like some sort of crazy painting. And once you open one door, new doors become accessible to you Mm -hmm. and not because, you know, you're lucky or anything. You just prove like you can do the work and you're good to work with. So then more people want to open the door and be like, hey, come on in. I have mm-hmm. snacks. Like, let's talk. Let's see. <laughs> let's see what you can do sort of thing. So that was one of the big turning points. And then I did creator own stuff. I did Barnstormers, which was that uh, creator own book I did that I put together and then did through Kickstarter. That's how I found my agent. Um, and he helped me shop it around. And then from there, I just did a bunch of pitches for the book market and for uh, the direct market, and then we got the Scholastic book picked up, um, and then just about the same time I got the Scholastic book picked up is when I got the chance to pitch the DC short, mm-hmm. and it was uh, it was basically like if you had to do any Halloween theme story, what character it would be and what would the story be, and I was like, I know exactly what it would be. It'd be Green Lantern. It would be a prison ship, and it'd be this whole introspective, creepy. My life isn't going to mean anything. <laughs> when I die mm-hmm. thing with Guy Gardner. So then from there, after that, um, I've been working on the DC shorts and then working on the OGN stuff with my agent and in the book market, developing more stuff there and working on the Scholastic book. So it's all been very long burn stuff, but you have to, it's very discouraging because it takes so long for mm-hmm. stuff to come out. Right. You worry people are going to forget that you ever did anything right <laughs> because like release schedules can be so long or like right now things can get pushed back so like barnstormers got picked up for release through simon and schuster uh through the uh insight imprint and it was supposed to come out this september but because of covid like it's not coming out now until next year so around the same time that uh, fearless rider comes out the barnstormers hardcover re-release will come out which is awesome right. um yeah uh, tell me, I remember when we, cause I met you at, in 2012, after you had done that top cow thing, it was at Cherry Capital Con in Traverse yeah. City. Jason Aaron was there. Do you remember? I, you, I remember you telling me that he gave you some advice that at that show. Do you remember what that was? Yes, I do. I talked to him at the table. First, he complimented my homemade Miracle Man shirt. Cause I, <laughs> he was like, where'd you get that? I was like, I made it. He was like, that's badass. Uh, and then I told him like I had won that thing and he'd surprisingly knew who I was just from the announcement. Um, it was very nice. It was like, Oh yeah, I saw that you won that. Congratulations. And I asked him if he had any advice for what to do. And he was like, he was like, I was in this exact situation. What you don't want to do is not work on anything and just wait for somebody to bring you something like just keep making stuff. Right. Which has honestly um, been the same advice I've gotten from everybody else in front of there. But that was really good advice to get because from what I've heard, a lot of people will think they'll get a paid gig or something at a publisher and then just wait right. for for somebody to offer them stuff. But really, like, if you love comics, you should always be making comics, whether somebody is going to publish it or not. Right. Like, well, whether right. the guarantee is there. So... Yeah, that advice that he gave me was so rock solid. And I think, like, I try to thank him every day by rebuying every version of his stuff because I love it so much anyway. (laughs) Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was great advice, uh, especially just coming up right then when I was just, you know, 
bright eyed and bushy tailed, like so excited just to be around everybody. Uh, it was really good advice. And so that's kind of been like the grind attitude I've had. Like I will, I just don't stop ever writing or putting things out there or sending out pitches or developing stuff mainly just because I wouldn't be happy if I did. Right. Like I'm a yeah. real like creator's guilt person. Like if I don't write even just a little bit each day or work on something, I'll feel like, you know, I forgot to let the dog back in after letting him out to go to the bathroom. Right. Something. Totally. I like that. Griffin, I admire that, Kenny. Griffin and Ethan. That's us. You guys want to write comic books. Yes. That's true. Yeah. Have you been writing every day? We have, uh, actually. Yeah. We've been doing I a lot have, of stuff recently. Yeah. I wouldn't say we, writing, not like script work. Right. But we've been working on things like pitch docs and issue outlines and character briefs. Those sorts of things we've been working on uh, pretty regularly at this point. Um, yeah. Can I and, can I put that out there because we we do want to talk about um, breaking in and one thing that I gave the advice to Griffin and Ethan to do because because initially you guys sent me a full script have we talked about this on the show? Maybe. Uh, <laughs> I, I just want to give the advice that I want anybody that's trying to learn to write comics to yeah. learn how to write a pitch document. It's very important um, because. If the pitch is good, if the pitch document is good, then you can move on to scripting the thing. And I think that that it's very important that you show the the pitch document around before you uh, jump in to something because uh, it helps you to make your idea more concise and it helps you to uh, you know it helps you to, to the elevator pitch idea, which. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I struggled with this. I remember the first thing that I pitched to Image because at one point I was going to go do an Image book, and I pitched them the most convoluted thing ever. And then I realized that the reason it's convoluted is because I don't have it figured out. You know, right. so yeah, that's just some advice for anybody trying to break in as a writer: is learn how to write a concise pitch. Uh, I, I, the, the way that I learned how to do it was. Jim Zub has a website, I think it's just jimzub.com, where he has his pitch documents on there. So I just kind of went in there and looked at how he did it, and uh, and it helped uh, so much. And I think that it can help anybody out there, especially to so that you're not spending a bunch of time going down a dead end. Because when I used to write when I was younger, because mm-hmm. I, I wanted to be a writer and artist, which, you know, I'm, I'm doing some writing here and there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Renaissance man, yeah. man Stegman over here. Um, I used to write. I used to do this thing where I didn't want to outline it. I didn't want. I just wanted to start writing, and then you would inevitably end up with the the scene where they're talking to a character who isn't adding anything to the story, you know, and <laughs> yeah. is just like spouting wisdom or something. And you're like, what? Where am I now? I don't have you know the whole plan. So doing the pitch document, doing the outlines will help you to. Uh, move forward. That's just something I wanted to throw out there. Am I right, Kenny? I, you're right. Yeah, the art of the pitch is tough. Like I only feel mm-hmm. I really nailed it. Maybe even like this past like year and a half, two years, and even then, even if you get way better at it, not every pitch is going to get picked up. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and that's that that saves you from having to awesome. yeah. You, it saves you from having to put in the time to, of something that doesn't get picked up. You know. Like you can absolutely, and plus, I, I will say this too: as an artist, uh, when I was trying to break in, um, people would send me. They, it was all the time. People would send me uh, emails, being like, because I would post my stuff online. They'd be like, "Would you do you want to uh, draw this this uh, book that I have?" And I'd be like, "Okay, well, what's it about?" And then they they'd be like. Uh, you know, they'd send me some vague email and I'd be like, well, do you have a script or a pitch document or anything? And they'd just be like, I haven't written it yet, but if you say you'll do it, then I'll write it. And I was like, the hell? So if you, if you can, if you can get the the pitch document down, then you're going to be able to, uh, you know, you're going to be able to attract an artist also, which is, you know, a big part of the, the battle. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, we've been, um, we've been feeling really... Mm, happy and uh it's i don't you don't want to say fulfilled because obviously you're like at stage one still but yeah. we've been coming away from each of our sort of creative sessions uh where we're working on these sorts of things feeling like we've made some significant progress even in just the the couple of hours that we've spent 
chatting about whatever project. Um, and so, and, and we haven't scripted a single page of either of the things that I think we've been developing the most. And so, um, yeah, no, it's been really, really, really helpful. Um, and that is certainly the best advice we've gotten from these two dudes and the best advice that we could possibly pass on to anybody else. Have a you guys resource been... that we've real quick, a pitch resource that we've talked about that Griffin and I both found really helpful with Brian Bendis's book word for pictures, the words for oh, pictures. Yeah. There's a whole section in there where he shows different writers pitch documents. And so you can kind of see how different people do it. <sighs> I and need it to get that. Explains it really well. And that, that was really, really helpful. And I, uh, I've kind of been kind of staying close to that, following that a little bit when I'm, when I'm trying to work on these things and it's been really helpful. That book in particular, I think, is super great because it's written by, of course, Brian Michael Bendis, who's the best dude uh, <laughs> and, the, you know, one of the greatest comic book writers of all time. And you look at that dude's scripts and they are not, <laughs> at least for me, it was not what I was expecting a Brian Michael Bendis oh, script no. to look like. And yeah, that's, right. that's the sort of thing where, like, I read that, uh, I read all that stuff and saw uh, those examples and I was like, ah. Oh, Fuck yeah. Okay, cool. Because I was worried I was doing it wrong the whole time. Yeah. And the really nice thing about comics is that there it really is no correct way to do any of that sort of stuff. And so, super cool. Kenny, did you have a question? Uh, Yeah, but I forgot it. Can you guys hear me, uh, by uh, the way? My headphones kicked yeah. me off. Yeah. yeah. You're good. You sound like garbage. Oh. Uh oh. Just kidding. He you frozen? Oh, he's a little frozen boy. <laughs> Oh no, he's got Alaska internet. Oh no, that's the first kind. <laughs> it's all right, Kenny will be back. Hey, almost, we're almost there. He's working on it. He's got a serious some, face on. Doing some tech magic. Chad Larson in the chat. Everybody go support his Death Shroud uh, Indiegogo. Hell yeah. Um, just type in Death Shroud Indiegogo. I'm sure you'll find it. I did the cover for the first issue. He's also got a Kyle Hotz one and a Brett Booth cover. It's awesome. Uh, he's amazing. Um, you know, I'm in love with Chad is what I'm saying. Hey, I was I was saying this a little earlier in the show, uh, and then we started talking about something else. I was talking about to John Iker earlier. Uh, and we were just talking about more, a little bit more about the cool uh, community that we've been able to create. And uh, he was talking about working with folks that he's met through the show, um, Corey King and and Scoot Starnes. And um, I just wanted to say, I think it's once again, I think it's fucking awesome <laughs> that you guys met and are working with each other. Yeah, really. Um, and I love seeing you guys push each other to keep making stuff. Um, and uh, please keep keep doing it, even if you feel like that uh, that fire's kind of died down. Because of course, Ethan and I have those moments. Ryan, Kenny, I'm sure you guys have those don't. moments where you're like, "Whew, I'm fucking drained. I don't want to do yeah. anything." Especially um, right now, since my MacBook pretty much just exploded. <laughs> <laughs> I, whatever it's all good. It's all good. Signs came on. I've never seen any of those before. But, um, <laughs> Chet, or Kenny's going to be doing his writing tomorrow on a legal pad. Yeah, I have to do it old. I'll just send pictures to somebody and ask somebody else to type it up. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, no, yeah. You just have to keep going. Fuck um, yeah. In terms of other writing books, since you guys mentioned the Bendis one, uh, uh -huh. and because it's so timely, and I was such a huge fan of his. Um, Denny O'Neill had a great writing book too that yeah. broke down a lot of different structure stuff called like the DC Guide to Writing Comics, which yeah. if I get stuck sometimes I'll go back and flip through just to kind of look at structural things and that one shows a lot of different types of scripting where like plot first or people who um, I've never done this but some people who just write all the dialogue first and then figure it out afterwards. Uh, which is an interesting way to go, like figure out what everybody's going to say. I wonder if I got Bendis does that. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. Bendis is very dialogue driven. I, I think that's interesting. I would love to try that. I would not. <laughs> that's We're, definitely the last step for me. You, adding dialogue is the last step? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I would say that I would, I would, I, this is just speculation, but Bendis's stuff all turns on the dialogue. Mm -hmm. right. So he, I, I would imagine he. he pictures his scenes in dialogue before he that is interesting it's kind of like yeah because like artists have different ways of approaching it too you know like some guys think of uh they they a creative layout before they start telling the story and you know there's all yeah. kinds of 
different ways to skin a cat. Totally. Yeah. Uh, I, I think like that devious little smile there. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe, unless Kenny, you had anything else you want to mention. Uh, I mean, I'm working on a ton of stuff right now. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I think the most recent thing I just did and sent out was because we talked about it about it on Twitter. Um, my friend Anaki and I, Anaki Espiazu, did a. We're working on an adaptation of H.G. Wells's The Red Room, mm. which is a like a little known short story, but one that I love. That's basically like a paranormal debunker goes to a haunted castle to stay in this room that apparently nearly kills everyone every time they stay there. And he's like, ghosts are bullshit. I've published stuff on how ghosts are bullshit. Um, and in the story, like things take a really unique and interesting turn. Uh, but the character isn't very developed. So um, I love the short story. So Anaki and I developed a pitch for a modern day update of it. Nice. Uh, with a little bit more fleshed out. We just sent that out. So that one's up for grabs. So if anybody in the chat would like to pay Kenny money and publish his book, you know, you just got to be the highest bidder. Yeah, Yeah, that one's a bit different because um, for a lot of, at least from what I know, like for a lot of pitching to the book market, like I'd write the whole script ahead of time. So I wrote like 140 page. Wait, Inaki's in here. Oh, he is? Yeah. His last name, how do you say his last name? Oz Piazu? That's what I. That's how I say it. He's never said it out loud to me. So if I'm saying his wrong, name, even might be in, in Yaki, but we'll see. We'll figure it out. Anyway, he yeah, he's in the chat. So hello, Inyaki, Inaki. Ooh, ooh. It's great to see you. Before ooh. before we do move on at all, I wanted to say, Kenny, you're getting so much love in the chat. Everybody loves mm-hmm. you. They want to see more right. work from you. Yeah, which is really nice. Um, well, and thank Griffin, you. So you Griffin, you and I are also getting a lot of feedback. I wanted to bring up on the show, Trinidad Gomez says, I'm kind of shook that Ethan and Griffin look exactly how they sound, which I think is fascinating. Wow. Very interesting. <laughs> I've, we've yeah. had that experience uh, before where we've been intimately familiar with podcasters' voices and yeah. then see their faces, and it's it's crazy. It's a whole experience to see that. Um, yeah. But thank you, maybe? Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people are bringing up... Uh, Listen, there's a lot of porn talk in the chat, and it's my fault. Uh, I Somebody was saying that even if I write Amazing Spider-Man, people are still going to remember those videos I made about porn, and I'm never going to live it down. So, never. Uh, we're bringing up <laughs> that I, I know. I know. It's going to stick with me forever. <laughs> Good job, Ethan. Well, hey. Um, obviously, we're all very excited for everything Kenny's doing, and we're going to stay up to yes. date with Kenny. And uh, anytime you got something that you want to plug or coming out, we're going to be on top of it. We're going to have you on the show. It's going to be sick. And hey, stay tuned. Kenny might be joining us for an episode of Supple Boys soon. So uh, keep your ears peeled for how, that one. But how come I've never been invited on that? Uh, well, you, Ryan... you wouldn't fucking want to. <laughs> I don't at all. And I won't yeah, do it. Bad. But I'd like to be invited. No, we've already okay. talked about, wouldn't it be cool if Ryan did an episode with us and we just got to chat and and then we were like, he'd never fucking do that. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would, guys. I probably would. I mean, One day. you guys pay, right? Well. Eh, all right. Depends. Let's give uh, it up for Kenny. Woo! Thank you so much. Hell yes. And now it's time for everybody's favorite segment. Oh, shit. Pop culture news. Absolutely, it is. <laughs> Pop culture news. Wait, NBA is basketball is being played right now. Does that count as pop culture news? The NBA restart just yeah, get, sure. got started up. I'm so excited. I have something to do with my evenings that isn't just like <laughs> watching reality TV. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's cool if you're into that kind of thing. I yeah, guess. if you're into um, that kind of thing. You know, yeah. I, I, so it's so weird to me because all my friends are into sports, you know, like we all talk sports yeah. or whatever. And then I became a comic book artist and I made new friends <laughs> in this industry. And I have yeah. no support in my love of sports whatsoever. None. <laughs> I can't to even. Be fair, 
Listen, when, man. Before it ended, I was keeping up on hockey. Okay, well, well the hockey's else the else worst sport, chat, so that yeah. that doesn't well, help. Okay, See, that's weird. The only sport that I like to watch is the UFC. I'm really into the UFC, which is like really strange. I started watching it. I never watched it really, but since they were uh, active during you know the shutdown, I watched mm-hmm. a little bit of. And you know, it's pretty all right. They hug honestly, each other a lot. Honestly, I kind of treat it. Just like I would treat uh, any other TV show or something like that, where like if I hear it's good, then I'll watch. But I've heard nothing but just shit tier stuff for every Detroit team for the past several years. <laughs> so I'm like, all right. Hey, our them. Tigers are four and two. That's all I know. <laughs> all right, <laughs> let's go, boys. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I fucking I played baseball for ten years. I would love to watch some baseball. Let's do it. No, um, but you can do it on your own. <laughs> I didn't I would never ever ever want to kick back and crack open a cold one and watch a game with Ryan Stegman. That sounds fucking awful if you ask me. Mm-hmm. I'm one of those guys probably... that explains to you everything that's happening even though you already know. <laughs> Baseball's the most simple yeah. sport ever. Yeah. I know it's This game is beautiful, Griffin. You got to understand. Oh, I get it. I know. Uh. You gotta, you gotta pay, you gotta pay Ryan his commission rate if you want to sit down and watch a game with him. Yeah, I like that idea. Watching a game and not having to draw. You put that on your OnlyFans account. Yeah, <laughs> right there, yeah, that's pretty good. All right, Ethan. But what about the things that are actually in pop culture news? Oh shit. Well, uh, so Haley Steinfeld is Kate Bishop in the Disney Plus Hawkeye show. Did you see that, Ryan? Did you see that, Kenny? I'm foggy on who Kate Haley Steinfeld is. I'm gonna look it up. She was in. She was in the new Bumblebee movie and whatnot. She's. Yeah, she's I don't. Uh, I, I didn't 17. see that. Yeah. I'm looking it up. I'm looking like, it up. She looks like Kate Bishop. <laughs> yeah, she does. Uh, uh, she that's really confirmed. Funny. That's been a rumor for ages. Is this real? This is uh, heavily reported, so it's basically, it's basically a fact. Who is okay. it? Who is she playing? Oh, she's playing. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that'll be cool. Yeah. yeah. Are they that doing the be... like Matt Fraction, David Aja run? That seems to be kind of what they're going for, especially if you've seen the kind of opening sequence animatic that leaked out mm-hmm. from when they were showing the Disney Plus stuff. It looks stylistically even like that book. Listen, Didn't they if we just... get a TV show where he's just a landlord fighting Russian yeah, guys right? in tracksuits, like I'm, I'm all good with that. Like I'll watch that TV show. Yeah, it would be great. Um, they yoinked that logo right from that book, right? Had that been used yeah. prior to that? Yeah, they just took that uh, logo. I, cool. <laughs> yeah, and it's also so, very exciting to see like a you know more like recent comic characters being adapted into live action stuff. Wait, so is it gonna is it gonna be Jeremy Renner? Oh fuck yeah. yeah. Despite the fact that apparently he threatened to kill his wife and himself. Oh, fuck no. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know why you brought that up. <laughs> <laughs> there were a lot of rumors that he was going to get pulled out of the show because there was controversy around that. Okay. Um, yeah. Also the app. Remember don't do that. His app? Hey, I have some... App and his new music. I have some advice to everybody listening to the show. Um, I wish I could get some really like heartfelt music going. I'll edit it. <sighs> Don't threaten to kill your wife and yourself. It's not no, good. It's bad. Just Leave uh, your wife alone. I guess I did threaten to kill myself earlier, but I said nothing about my <laughs> wife. Your wife was not threatened in any way. Yeah. No wives were threatened in the making of this podcast. Thank Christ. Uh, let's move on. So, friend of the show. He- Friend of the show, Keanu Reeves, mm-hmm. uh, is is writing his own comic book called Berserker. Did you guys see this? He's breaking into the industry, but it only took him one comic. <laughs> to break, to break into- <laughs> I think I don't. I can't say anything. That may have been why he was wanting to meet with Donnie initially, but you know, obviously was, Donnie's not working yeah, on it. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if that's the case, but I know that he he had some comic. He he is a comic book fan. Like he's, yep. you know, like we said with. Uh, uh, with um, Donnie, he he had read all of Donnie's stuff, so right, right. And the main character of his comic looks just like him. It's basically just Keanu Reeves. I Thank mean, you. Uh, <laughs> if you've got the rights to Keanu Reeves and you're Keanu Reeves, just put him in the book. Just do yeah. it. Yeah, that's a good there's point. A of, there's, a, 
There's a lot of talk about A-list celebrities kind of taking over YouTube as they all, like, Will Smith's got a YouTube channel and stuff. Is this the start of A-list celebrities stealing the comic book industry? <laughs> well, first of all, I would like to say that I was on YouTube before Will Smith and I made an A-list celebrity. A-plus yeah. list celebrity. Okay, so give me my credit. Uh, second of all, sure, go ahead. You know what? Take over YouTube and take over the comic book industry because then I'll take over movies. I'm going to become an actor. Oh, oh. While, so they're, while they're looking in the other direction, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be in God Country. I'm, I, I'm sure of it. I'm, I keep talking to Donnie. If they make that yeah. movie, I want to star in it. You're gonna God. play the sword. Well, the, the voice of the sword. That's fine. I, can I was do that. hoping more you'd take roles like Independence Day three or something like that. Movies oh hell that yeah. Will Smith should have been in but wasn't. <laughs> My wife did just come pour me wine, so I'm drinking officially now. Hey, all right, Ryan, let's go. Yeah. She's let's go. she's a great wife, and I would never threaten to kill her and myself. <laughs> if, if you're not drinking Probably not a good joke. pop culture news, you're never going to make it to the end. Yeah, that's true. All right, <laughs> Snyder, Snyder Cut news. <laughs> Zack Snyder's finishing the movie for free, apparently. He's not even getting paid for it, which okay. is Cash bizarre. I think he probably already got paid too much for that movie, so... Yeah, this probably. has just always been so weird to me, the, like, Snyder Cut. Oh, things. well, yeah. don't say that in front of Griffin and Ethan, because their whole lives revolve around the Snyder Cut. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just can't stop talking about it. What was Zack Snyder's I, original vision? I personally flew a biplane over Comic-Con with a big <laughs> banner in the back that said, release the Snyder Cut. <laughs> See? Um... No, but we saw we saw our first little clip from it that showed Henry Cavill in his black and silver suit. Although it's just a previously deleted. Oh yeah, I did see that. CGI yeah, kind of neat. Kenny, you excited? <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> is there? All right, in your opinions, Kenny, Kenny, you start with this answer. Is there a good movie to be cut out of that garbage of a movie? Um. So just cutting with what they have? Well, not with what you saw. Well, yeah, I guess you. I, that's a weird question. Like, do you, th do you think that there was a seed of a good movie there? Because we don't know what footage they have that they didn't use. I mean, from, keep in mind that apparently it, Green apparently Green Lantern is going to be in it. So keep that in mind. I. Okay. I saw that movie, the cut that we got. There is a scene. All the, listen, all the actors in that movie are cool people, and yeah. I don't think it's, it has yeah. anything to do with who was cast. But the yeah. way that story was done, there's a scene in that movie when uh, Ben Affleck and Gal Gadot are talking to each other after like a bad Justice League meeting, and the way that they're acting, and because of how I felt about the movie, I can't tell if they're talking about how horrible the superhero team <laughs> movie superhero team is going or how horrible the movie they're in is going <laughs> I'm just like I can't believe that happened like this is going so poorly I'm, I'm not a fan I'm not a fan of those um, of those movies very much and I understand people that are but just like personally it's not I think everybody who was cast in a in a better done movie like could have been amazing but it's just it's I think it's just too jumbled like it's too much too soon like the movie makes a lot of the movie makes a lot of assumptions that people know who these characters are and they know who mm. Batman Superman and Wonder Woman are but most people outside of people who are fans of the TV show don't really know the Flash don't really know Aquaman nobody really knows who Cyborg is so to just throw him in there without like seeing him come to fruition like it would have probably I'm not going to play armchair quarterback because I could go on a dumb nerd rant of being like, this is how I would do it. I'm not going to. do <laughs> that, So, uh, but no, I don't know. I don't think any amount of cutting or reshaping stuff can make a better movie. But for people who already like that movie, like I like a lot of bad movies. Like, did you know that I didn't know until like three or four years ago that Waterworld was a bad movie? Like, I oh, man. Oh, no. Awesome. People still, fucking hate Waterworld. Yeah, I saw it in the theater, and I was like, this is awesome, and my brother and I would play Waterworld at the beach. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's like, like me the smokers. Me with the movie Hook, which I just thought, thought was the best movie ever. <laughs> and then I was like, my wife said she hadn't seen it. I was like, you haven't seen Hook? 
what's wrong with you? And then I was like, we're going to watch Hook right now. And I put it on and I was like, oh, this isn't good. <laughs> and then, of course, like it was early on in our relationship. So I was like, he thinks I'm an idiot now. Like I was so insistent that this movie was amazing. You like look over at your hook poster on the wall. Yeah. And like, Shit. yeah. <laughs> I just want to say a lot of folks are popping off in the chat talking about um, the two supple cuts that exist of Spider-Man 3 and the Amazing Spider-Man films. And I just wanted to let the audience know those are for your you can watch those whenever you want. Just email us at supple boys. You, you, you ever seen well, a good cut of Spider-Man 3, Kenny? It's pretty no, good. Send it to me. If you guys do a if you guys do a supple cut of Justice League, I would watch that. We There's wa- nothing to do. There's nothing to do. <laughs> That's kind of like, like I think about Man of Steel, right? Like you can't recut it unless the the only way to to recut it so that it was a good movie was to add like three hours to explain everything that they all the different plot threads that didn't tie together. Like you can't cut it down. You can't pare it down. You'd have to expand it, and it was bad. So like, why are you going to expand this <laughs> trash? It's just brutal. Yeah, it's just not the way I see those characters. Get, Zach, get Zack Snyder on the show. I want to yell at him to his face. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it. Right. Well, yeah, they did know. some filming for that in Michigan, didn't they? Batman v Superman was shot in Detroit. Yeah, bit. they shot it actually right outside my friend's house. Like oh, that's the Batmobile scene where he rips the yeah. like top yeah. off. Oh, that was Batman v Superman. Yeah, like where he rips yeah. the canopy off the Batmobile. She saw the Batmobile first before anybody and tweeted a picture of it, and then oh, like man. her like Twitter account broke, basically and she had to turn it off. That's uh, cool. But yeah, they shot all the Batmobile sign uh, sign scenes right outside her house, so it was pretty nuts. Um, but yeah, yep. like people who are excited about it, I won't like I won't yuck someone's yum if they're into it. Like I will. That's great. I know you will. <laughs> <laughs> I like if they like it, that's fine. Personally, but I'm just like- not super into it. I can't remember what it was, but Ryan Lee said he liked something today, and I was just like, no, you don't. You do not like that. <laughs> it sounds like a typical exchange. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You do not. And then, but then Riley backed me up. He said, yeah, no, Ryan's right. Uh, well, Ryan Stegman's right. Uh, he, you don't like that. And Ryan was like, I, I think I do. <laughs> You're like, no, it does you get don't. It's confusing where we have to say both of your full names every yeah. time we address you <laughs> on the call. It's like, hey, Ryan, you know? Like both of you at yeah. the same time. That's well, funny. Maybe you'll like this. Uh, Star Wars news. Oh, Donald yeah. Glover, Donald, Donald Glover Lando is probably getting a Disney Plus series. That's awesome. I mean, Mandalorian was yeah. cool. I like that format for Star Wars stuff. Uh, and he's an interesting character that, you know, I think they could do a lot with him. Yeah. So. And Donald Glover's the best. Yeah. Donald yeah, Glover. Awesome. Although if this takes away from him making more Atlanta, I'm against it because Atlanta is the best Agreed. show ever. Agreed. <laughs> yeah, it might. It could. He better just like walk from one set onto the other, just like drop the velvet <laughs> cape. Yeah. <laughs> or he could just he could just wear he could just be Lando in Atlanta too. It wouldn't be any weirder than anything else that's happened in that show. <laughs> Uh, he's like he's just Lando. Yeah. Any stranger than the Teddy Perkins episode. Yeah, that's such here's a good a, episode. Oh, it's amazing. Here's a a Griffin exclusive for anybody that isn't uh, a female in their early twenties in the Grand Rapids area on Tinder. My anthem is a Childish Gambino song. So uh, there you go, some uh, Childish Gambino vibes. All right, your you plug your Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan, I told you Fuck we had that. to get rid of Griffin. Let's go. You said let's give him another chance. He won't plug his Tinder anymore. Yeah, right. Hit me up, folks. This might be the one time Ryan actually wants me to talk about Star Wars. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, I mean, that's cool that they're doing that show. Mandalorian was really fun. I liked it a lot. I think that probably, like you said, Ryan, TV is probably the way to go from that stuff. And spiraling outward instead of you know, digging deeper inward, like they tried to do with the last movie of like trying to over explain things. I think that this is also a really interesting thing too. Cause like when I was growing up, star Wars was done. Like, Oh yeah. It was over. Mm-hmm. So the only star Wars stuff you got was other characters, mm-hmm. like all the novels and everything and comics and video games were all about way different characters, way different people. 
So I got used to just exploring that kind of stuff. But I was like, Luke Skywalker, those guys, like their story was over to me. So like, I want to see other stuff happen and like new characters and things go on. So I think like the TV show and spinning stuff off in those directions is a great idea. It's approved. They can do it. Yep. <laughs> All right. Approved. It. We've, yeah. yeah, let's do it. All for um, it. Yeah. Well, Capes. one last thing that may get Kenny Porter approved is that there's a big rumor going around that there's going to be an MCU Illuminati movie based on the Brian Bendis comic. Uh, and I was very excited by that. I think that sounds fucking cool. So we would be bringing in Reed finally to the MCU. You you think so? So it'd be it was Namor, Strange, Reed, Black Panther. Who else? Or was that it? There's a lot of a lot of rumors that Namor will show up in Black Panther too, and so that would kind of line up. That would work out. Fuck, that's cool. Who's gonna play Namor? I can play Namor. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah. Look, shirt off, Ryan. (laughs) There's my Namor face. Oh fuck yeah, that's a perfect Namor face. If for the people listening to the podcast, it's I'm doing a perfect Namor face. The eyebrows, yeah. everything's there. Yeah. <laughs> no, that would be a sweet movie. Like I love that whole era and run of Marvel comics. So to bring those characters in, oh man, that'd be a good, just like sort of like government conspiracy type thriller mm-hmm. sort of movie. Yeah. Like one of those old Robert Redford like government, like you know, Three Days of the Condor sort of thing. But doing that with Marvel stuff, where it's all the decisions that they have to make behind the scenes so that life can continue for right. everybody else yeah. have some semblance of normalcy. I like that. I like that. I like Marvel things, turns out. What do you know? <laughs> Great Whatever addition. Us to the end of Griffin. News. Griffin was out of things to talk about once we stopped talking about Tinder. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, I like Marvel. Yeah. Hey, D dubs Oh, ahead, D-Dubs is in the chat letting you know that you sound like you're underwater, Kenny. I, I disagree. You sound water, great but... to me. Daniel is a liar. You sound good. Um, it might be because I had to switch headphones. So Daniel's trying to get I'm in your just head. Doing a, uh, D-Dubs, you should get water. in this Skype call right now and shred. Okay, now we'll wait for yeah, you want, me to, to you want me to try to add him? Dude, that would be... yes, let's do it. Let's right. do it. Hold on, Kenny, you got interrupted again. Did you have a question? Oh, no, I was just going to say, I know I've been beating the DC drum a ton, but I love Marvel just as much. So I got, I'm got i sipping out of my Daredevil cup because I'm a child. Yeah. Like, right? <laughs> oh, he says he's unavailable. He won't answer. Uh, Boo! When I'm involved. You know what? But it's still uh, some chains in the chat for Daniel Warren Johnson. Cause he's, he's the best dude. He is a great guy. Yeah, he's fine. Mm. <laughs> He gave us free stickers. <laughs> I love this this comment. Comics Misexplained says Danny DeVito as Lockjaw. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. That is good. It's like a it's like a cat situation. Who's got who's got the biggest jowls in Hollywood? That's who you need for I can't think of any I mean, I feel like we used to have some really jowly actors. Yeah, we could have had Marlon. Yeah, John that's a good Goodman. Man. John Goodman. Oh yeah, he's got some jowls. Yeah, John Goodman. Fuck yeah. <laughs> good call. Disappointed locked it like in Roseanne. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god yes. Uh, in Roseanne. Cameo <laughs> appearance. Dan would get upset with people. That would be great. Oh, Dan's joined. I'm What's here. Up, Dan, Dan put up, your video dude? on. You're gonna shred us out of this episode. Yep. Okay. Oh, hold on. <laughs> I need to figure Do you out have a shirt it. on? No, well, I have Oop, a good shirt on, but oh, dope! Very nice. Oh, right. oh. I'm I'm drawing here. Watch this. I'm gonna show up Ryan right now. I'm drawing a, an Akira. I'm drawing an Akira. Drawing. Ooh. Dang. Okay. Oh. Okay. All right. This is not why I invited you here, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel's YouTube show has now commandeered this youtube show yeah what the hell are we gonna are we gonna are we gonna be those youtubers that like strategize digs at each other to get views yeah uh, let's it's absolutely time. do it i mean sure. i'm having chip on the show next week and i'm pretty sure that's all that's gonna happen is he's gonna make fun of me the whole time so that's exactly what's happening i'm gonna do one of those react channels where i'm like yo looks like this is what stegman said about d yeah. in this last episode <laughs> and we're gonna and ethan and i are gonna produce all of it and it'll take somebody to take a micro uh, a magnifying glass to it and go wait a minute these guys are making all of this content <laughs> 
Daniel, your uh, all your commissions you've been putting on Twitter, man, have just been insane. Every Star Wars one you've done, that Battle of Crate one, the Revenge of the Sith one, holy shit, dude. I fucking love those. I really appreciate it. Of course. I'm in between projects now, so I can focus all my time on commissions for a little while. Yes. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Uh, we're here to announce Daniel's next project. No, I know what it is. <laughs> I'm going to announce it. I feel like everybody in this chat knows what it is. Uh, I'll say this. It involves ping pong. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, all right, Daniel, where's your guitar? Get your guitar. Uh, you have to. You can air guitar shred us out, you know, you, if you need to make up a little. We'll, we'll edit it in later. We'll edit it in later. Yeah. yeah. I don't have. Well, I mean. Don't say you don't have any guitars. Cause <laughs> yeah, that's all you have. Daniel's, Daniel, Daniel's like a rock and roll Beetlejuice for this episode. <laughs> I don't have anything to put my phone on. And it's it's not seasoned or I have this big that's light. That's perfect. Show. Perfect. Everybody has to shut the fuck up or we're not going to hear it in the audio. No, it's like not even... It's... Oh my gosh, Daniel is blowing the episode. We had such a good episode. <laughs> oh my god. And then oh Daniel god. comes in. I oh. joined and uh, I just ruined it. And uh... Oh my gosh, we can't even keep up with how many thumbs downs we're getting right now. <laughs> I'm just kidding, don't thumbs down. Please don't Listeners. thumbs down. Smash the like button, hit the subscribe, and yeah. the bell icon. The, the more thumbs up you get, the more shredding Daniel's going to do. Yeah, it's actually a lot like Murder Falcon. The more likes we get, the better he can play. Yeah. Speaking <laughs> of Murder just... Falcon, look what, my, look what my wife made me for my birthday. Ah. Uh, a Murder Falcon. Oh, that's sick. It's like oh, a, awesome. it's like a, it's like a mug that's like got Murder Falcon laid yeah. into it. Very that's cool. Awesome. That is neat. I guess yeah. your wife loves you. You you can shred. Your wife loves you. You draw yeah, great commissions. You wine during the episode, right? Oh yeah, that's right. I'm only somehow just now realizing how white and male this podcast is. Like, I know. It took, it took Daniel to just hit critical mass of just five white guys. I really gotta. I gotta work on this. Of bearded white men. Let's do it. Let's go. Hey yeah. guys, it's a podcast. <laughs> Well, should we close it out? Are we good? Unless you want to do a whole nother episode with Daniel Warren Johnson. Right? <laughs> yeah, let's talk. We'll talk ping pong. Okay. Yeah. Talk, talk guitars. I, I'll let you guys know. I'll give you the exclusive, just how many guitars I own. How about we do what we do in the when we're on Skype all day, where you try to talk about guitars and I just interrupt you and ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> well, in Riley's, in our buddy Riley's uh, words... I ruin Riley's day whenever I talk about guitar. <laughs> <laughs> you hear him audibly groan. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. And I can like I can because we've had Riley on the show a couple of times and he's you know he's a soft spoken man and so I can kind of hear him just kind of in the background just kind of being like Dan you're oh. just ruin it you're ruining my day dude please stop talking about guitars. <laughs> I don't know. It's funny though because what do like what does anybody want to talk in our Skype chats? It is very much like, just please don't have a topic. Just everybody <laughs> just talk bullshit so that we can, while we're working, because like Riley will be like, here's the comics I got this week. And I'm like, I don't care. Like, just <laughs> insult me so that I can keep drawing. Well, usually what happens is when I sign on, I'll ask for five minutes to talk about what I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. And those five minutes used to be respected. <sighs> Flashback to like 2018 <laughs> Skype calls. I'd say, guys, I need five minutes to talk about Star Trek Deep Space Nine. And they would respect it. And then once they started talking about Japanese pro wrestling, they wanted none of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have no frame of reference for it. At least I've seen Star Trek, you know, like... Yeah, but well, once I start talking about Japanese wrestlers, uh, Ryan's brain just melts out of his ears. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That is true. Naito, though. I know the name Naito. Naito. That's your favorite. Yeah, just lost the belts, too. <sighs> Poor Naito. <sighs> <laughs> well, well, do, you, do you, want five, you want five minutes to talk about Japanese wrestling right now? I'll give it to you, Daniel. Yeah, go ahead, Daniel. Yeah, podcast. Go ahead, Daniel. Do you want to last before Ryan's segment interrupts me rudely? Uh, do you want? I will. I you, promise. Do you want me and Griffin to produce a Japanese wrestling podcast for you? We'll do, we'll do it. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Well, 
um, as you know, coronavirus. All right. Well, that's enough. Uh, we had a great episode. Uh, <laughs> it planned from the jump. Thanks, everybody. It's been a great thanks show. Thanks Yep. Thanks, Kenny. Uh, I love thanks everybody. On, uh, we'll be back next week with uh, Chip Z. Uh, round two. Round three, technically, if you count the episode where he uh, hosted. So, uh, yeah. Thanks, guys, for coming on. And, um, yeah, we'll be back next week. Thanks, guys. You know where to find everybody on.